So you know how Lava Back was perhaps a bit of a bump in difficulty, a little bit of a challenge, yeah, and maybe Deathstalker was the same too, a little bit. Ooh, okay, all right, now we're talking. Well, imagine if we got a deeply volatile Lava Back and a Deathstalker subspecies that both came to the game and proceeded to eat us. Yeah. Hello, my fellow hunters of wildest artist. I welcome you to this video. Because otherwise, I, you wouldn't feel welcome, and that's, you know, you don't want to be watching anything not in a welcome state. That's just sad, isn't it? Sad and mean, and I'm sorry, I'm going to start the video now. I uh, want to sit down and talk with you guys about the two massive confirmed updates, DLC, etc. that are coming to Wild Hearts, and what will be in each one, because it really is quite impressive that we're not only immediately getting updates, but they're already laid out for us, and they're happening as soon as next month, March, and then again in April, adding large amounts of content, including many new full-on kimono and the armor and weapons that go along with that, too the game. So let's break this all down. First and foremost then, the March update. This is very exciting. So, we're getting a new kimono in Hellfire Lahabak, which is a deeply volatile lava back from the looks, and well, <laughs> okay, alright, that's fine. I, oh, I don't know how I feel about this one, because we have deeply volatile Deathstalker, who was absolutely brutal and I cannot wait for you to watch me and Godden fight him, but he is a technically higher star kimono than Lava Back. So for them to then deeply Lava Back as an update, he surely would have to be harder than the Soul Stalker. So that would imply he's going to be ridiculous, especially to make up for the weaker baseline kimono. Basically, the bottom line here is expect death. I am very excited for that challenge. Then we get a whole new kimono in Grim Stalker, a wolf type kimono kin to Death Stalker, and this will be your subspecies. This will be your Onyx Shard to your Gold Shard. It will be your Ice Tusk to your King Tusk, the Grim Stalker to the Death Stalker. So a more powerful, slightly changed version of Death Stalker, perhaps no longer ice, perhaps differently themed, and ready to, well, give us one stern challenge and uh, the reward for doing so will be new Grimstalker weapons and armor so that's very exciting because more armor and weaponry really is I think needed because the end game build variety is a little bit lacking at the moment and that's expected with you know a launch game and its launch kimono so the more that arrives is very very exciting and I hope these very much do make big waves when it comes to all of our best build and such, and when that does eventually happen, you know, of course, we will give you guys the new good stuff on that regard. And, well, Grimstalker, then. I feel like he might just be purely physical. Either that, perhaps he'll go in the canyon, in the caves, maybe he is a bit more of the sportaily type, a little bit darker, perhaps he's uh, got a little bit more earthy or wood element to him, I uh, kind of get a more proper actual direwolf feel from him, and that's really, really exciting. I would love to know what you guys think the Grim is going to imply in our new wolfy friend. Then we get a whole smattering of new high difficulty quests, and guys, get this. A new emote, and a new chat stamp! I don't know about you, but I am sold. No idea when in March that is actually going to hit, so hopefully we don't have to wait too long, but it is going to be very, very good. Then, that's not all. We also have details of what will be happening in April, and this time around, it's an even bigger update. We get a full-on new deeply volatile kimono again, that's to be expected. The only curiousness is which one they will choose. I'm sure no matter what it is, it's going to be horrendous. In the best way, of course. Then we get a full-on new kimono, and in this case, it looks like it's going to be new new kimono. Not a new variation or version of something existing, a full-on new base kimono with all the equipment that comes with that, which is awesome. Something to join the likes of Golden Tempest, Ember Plume, 
Gloom, Amaterasu, as the big boys of the endgame, a new probably hardest base kimono for us to face, and I for one am very much all about that. And then we're going to get a new weapon and equipment enhancement system to further, I assume, diversify builds, to give us more grinding to work towards, and increase our power, which is also really, really nice. More high difficulty quests, of course, as they come flowing in. And then perhaps most curiously, most interestingly, new Karakuri. I honestly thought they might never really do that, but I guess if you're going to add a new kimono, you need to add a new flash of inspiration with a new Karakuri that counters it. So I suppose one new fusion per new kimono does make sense, so we'll have to see what that ends up being. And it's that new Karakuri that makes me convinced the new kimono is a properly new new kimono, unlike anything in the game, because that's what would give us a reason to have a new flash of inspiration and new fusion. Though can you imagine them adding a new basic Karakuri, giving us a seventh option to really make us choose which four we want? But I guess that would mean that it would be only used in the new fusion and then for nothing else, so probably I don't see that happening, at least not until like a full-on sequel game, but hey, it is definitely fun to think about, is it not? So yeah, within the next sort of 60 days or so, we can expect ourselves at least four new kimono, two deeply volatile, one subspecies, and one new new, two new armor sets, two new, or at least two to four new nodes on the weapon tree, a new actual endgame enhancement system for our equipment, a whole new Karakuri, and various new quests and uh, things to be getting on with in our Wild Hearts hunting journey, which just really is fantastic, and I'm really really excited. I would love to hear your guys' speculation, your thoughts on what we're going to get, what you would like from this, and of course, why you are excited for specifically the new emote and chat stamp, because really without that, this whole thing would be pointless and unplayable. So yeah, credit where it's due, hopefully any performance fixes and patches and getting it actually playable and runnable to everyone uh, happens before the first update so everyone can jump in and enjoy it, that is of course key, and it really is a shame that so many people are still struggling to play what is otherwise a fantastic experience, so that is something I really want to see to really help these updates pop. For now then, let me know what you think, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more, consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage. Is, uh, goodbye.